So uh, this is <clears throat> just a snapshot of the uh, README. Um, so obviously, I hope you managed to get through ones from last week. So we have uh, three notebooks scheduled now, one maximum likelihood estimation, um, an OSCM implementation and MAPEM. So let me just give you a little bit more on what is in each of these. So in the first one, um, is uh, a notebook that guides you through using OSCM, uh, but not just by calling it like uh, we did last week, but also by stopping it in this case, not for filtering, but just to uh, compute the objective function. But obviously you could put other things in there as I illustrated earlier. And then compare that with gradient ascent, simple gradient ascent with a, a fixed step size, which might get you into trouble uh, if you choose it too large or it might be too slow if you choose it uh, too small. Uh, but so that is a notebook that tries to uh, make you aware of these things and, and see how you would uh, implement it. Um, just as an aside, it uses for the OSCM implementation, it, it uses this uh, nicely uh, called algorithm, which is an ordered subsets maximum a posteriori one step plate algorithm. But luckily, if you don't have a prior, that turns out to be just OSCM, so you can use that. Um, so, and the aim is then to, to compare and, you know, get you familiar with how to implement all of this yourself. In the next step then says, well, okay, I, I suppose I don't have this, uh, 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 serve functionality, but I do have the acquisition model. Uh, can I write MLEM and, uh, well, first MLEM yourself and then also OSCM. Now, as Andrew explained, the difference between those two is more or less that you do the forward and backward operations only on a subset. So uh, you just will see how to call subsets in that notebook, but then otherwise your MLEM implementation an OSCM implementation will be virtually identical. So um, that's your challenge over here. And then in the final notebook, we go to this uh, De Piero Map EM implementation that Andrew went through last time. So we don't give you the full theoretical explanation for it. There are some pointers to the paper in the notebook, uh, but really the challenge is to implement this yourself given the formulas that are there uh, and, and some existing uh, Python code uh, that uh, came from Sam Ellis, uh, former PhD student of Andrew on implementing the, the smoothing term that you saw earlier on the slide. Um, and then there are some challenges in that notebook there for people who have the time and inclination to uh, compare this to other uh, existing algorithms for map uh, optimization. Uh, also to say, well, what happens if you don't have a quadratic prior? Uh, the theory tells you what you should do for a certain class of prior, so you can implement that. Uh, this, there is no existing code there for you. You, you need to put your mathematical hat on and, uh, and uh, compute the relevant weights that you need, and then you can get that one going. And then, uh, Christoph, so the, these were sort of the challenges that I had in mind when uh, we were looking at those notebooks, but uh, Christoph sent you a challenge to try and implement conjugate gradient uh, via CIL. And then I thought, well, uh, obviously CIL has a lot of algorithms for optimization. Um, so can we apply those for PET as well? Now this turns out uh, to be a harder challenge than you would hope in some sense, because uh, least squares optimization is easier than something that uh, uses the Poisson lock likelihood or the, uh, the KL distance, largely because there are potential problems on infinities and, and zeros and so on that Andrew already alluded to. But uh, if you have a non-zero background and you do impose a positivity constraint, which some of the algorithms can do in CL, a lot of them, uh, then you can 
uh, attempt to do this. So this, there is no existing code for that whatsoever. This is much harder than the uh, conjugate gradient challenge that Christoph set you. So the, uh, let's see how, how far you guys can get to it. Remember that if you use the existing objective function from PET, you want to flip the sign. If you use the KL distance in CIL, then you don't have to. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's it, what I wanted to show. Um, any questions at this point? No. Um, oh, I see a chat. Oh, it's all very clear. Well, that's great. Uh, so let me then Hi, end Chris. you. Yep. Sorry, um, Patricio Fernandez is writing to me only. So he had a question for you, yeah. asking if all this theory is put in the MRF, which I'm not entirely sure now what it means. Sorry, in the MRF. Maybe what do you mean? Magnetic to... resonance fin fingerprinting? Yeah, fingerprinting. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. correct. Okay. Um, is that something you want to tackle, Christoph? Or I can waffle a little bit, but... Um... No, but I mean, so, right, MRF is like a very specific technique for, for MRI, where we, so we... What we have been talking about so far is always reconstructing images. Um, and for MR, this basically means that um, we are reconstructing an image contrast. Uh, so the individual pixel values don't have any meaning. So if a pixel is 1,000 or 500, there is no units. So it's not like um, CT where there are Hounsfield units or PET where I actually measure tracer concentration. In MR, that's arbitrary. Um, and fingerprinting then tries to really estimate the underlying biophysical properties which create this contract. Um, the famous ones are T1 and T2 times, so it's the MR relaxation times. And in uh, MR fingerprinting, we're trying to use a signal model in order to estimate these parameters from a certain set of acquisition, but it's a very specific technique. And, and I think don't think anything we have discussed here today really touches on that. Um, it also it's not really an iterative reconstruction uh, because it's actually a direct reconstruction. And it's more like, a, yeah, it's called dictionary matching. So where you have a, a set of function or a set of signals and you're trying to compare your signals to this library and try to find the best match. And this is then your parameters. Such a very brief overview, but there's a lot more behind that. Yeah. But it, it wasn't touched in any of that stuff here. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Chris.